Growing up in Rapid City, Troy Dobbins vividly remembers that fateful day, June 9th of 1972. 50 years later, he decided to write a book documenting history and his family's life. In his book, Dobbins accounts seven different stories that are revealed through several accounts of the family, but mostly through the eyes of the then eight-year-old author. The one thing you gotta understand about my mom's side of the family is that they all live on the same side of town. So they were very close-knit, and in 1972, they lived in a trailer court that was here behind Fisher Furniture. And uh, you look at it today, and you can't believe there was a trailer court down here, but there was, and they all lived here. And for years, I wasn't able to talk about it. I would just start shaking and, and all kinds of things, but I got past that, and this book has really been therapeutic in uh, letting go of a lot of stuff. I didn't realize till I started writing it how much I was hanging on to. It was a day kind of like this, but it was a little bit hotter. There was no breeze kicking around, so me and my cousins are out riding bikes and, and uh, sweating it up. We were actually moving out of this trailer court that day. My mom and dad found a house in Piedmont and we were moving out and we took their bed and some boxes out there. Everything else we had was in here. It, the dam broke at 1130. So, and I think that's why so many people died because they were, they were in bed. They were just taken by surprise. There were, um, before when it was just raining really heavy, there was some scrolls on the TV um, saying, if you live near the creek, you should go to higher ground. We're three blocks from the creek, so we didn't think that included us. <laughs> when the water came down Jackson Boulevard, it, it built up dams of debris and then that would break away in another one. So it was more like tidal wave after tidal wave after tidal wave coming down and, and picking up more and more. And when I say debris, I don't mean like sticks and, and uh, patio furniture, I mean houses and trucks. And, and so those things would crash into each other and it was a nightmare. And the fact that my family all survived, it's, it's more of a story of survivorship. Um, you definitely always think about the 238 families that lost somebody. That's, that's hard to take. There is a woman and a baby buried in the Spearfish graveyard that was in the flood. And I don't know them, I don't know anything about them, but I, Memorial Day, I always take flowers up there. It's like a kinship there. You know, you start talking to someone else that was in the flood and it's like you've known them forever. And I think even people in Rapid that wasn't in the flood, but was here at the time. There, it was a very, very strong community. And of course, there are more people we don't know what happened to them. So most of the people that we were friends with, we never saw them again. So whether they lived or not, I don't know. One of the most uh, interesting stories is my Aunt Irene spent the night over there on the Safeway sign. Some various different ideas on how she came to be on top of the sign and why and how she came to be there. What I wrote is what I remember with okay. them talking about when I was growing up. Uh, my, one of my uncles found two little boys underneath a mattress that were dead. And, and me and my cousin Danny came this close to finding uh, four bodies in a car. This car had been pushed up against a pole and, you know, we're eight, nine years old. We don't have any sense in our heads. Yeah. And we heard that you uh, could go through the, the flood cars and find pop bottles. And back then, pop bottles were redeemable for cash. And so that's what we were doing. And we were pulling on the door of this car that was over here in the gap. And uh, we couldn't get it open. It was full of mud all the way up to the windows. and and we weren't strong enough to pull it open. My mom caught us. Get away from that car, you crazy kids, it's gonna fall on you. And so we went back over to where they were and probably not even 15 minutes later, a National Guardsman came along and opened that same door and a hand fell out and there was four adults in that car. I had nightmares about that. And there were huge, uh, great big 100 year old cottonwood trees over there. And this part of the trailer court where we lived was, um, it was brand new. They just kind of installed it, they expanded. There were no trees over here. So as kids called this the bald lands. <laughs> that was in my grandparents' yard. 
Okay. And I remember him planting that and being so proud of it. And then uh, with all the damage and everything, it came back. <laughs> Who would dream? It's 50 years old, that stump. <laughs> A lot of memories uh, here then. Oh yeah. For more on Dobbin's book titled 6972, One Family's Night of Terror, you can head to nc1.tv.